lead with them. We're doing some good things with Mexico. We're doing some, uh, some, some work in uh, the illegal drug and, and gang area. That's a, a good cooperative uh, effort. I think that uh, our trade agreements have been a, a net benefit for, for both countries, uh, really. But uh, we have to look out for the long-term best interest of our country, which I think happens to be uh, in the long-term best interest of uh, the people of his country. Senator Thompson, thank you. Gentlemen, it's time for another quick break. But our Republican presidential forum continues here on Fox News Channel and Fox News Radio right after these messages. back now for the final segment of our candidates forum from the Fox Box on the campus of St. Anselm College in New Hampshire. But let's turn to the campaign and the way it is being waged. Mitt Romney has run negative ads against Mike Huckabee in Iowa and now John McCain in New Hampshire. Let's see some of his greatest hits. <laughs> McCain opposes repeal of the death tax and voted against the Bush tax cuts twice. McCain pushed to let every illegal immigrant stay here permanently, even voted to allow illegals to collect Social Security. Mike Huckabee, soft on government spending. He grew a $6 billion government into a $16 billion government, backed in-state tuition benefits for illegals, and granted 1,033 pardons and commutations, including 12 murderers. His foreign policy? Ludicrous, says Condoleezza Rice. Senator McCain, back in 1988, Bob Dole famously <laughs> said to George Bush, stop <laughs> lying about my record. It didn't, didn't do him a lot of good. <laughs> no, it didn't, but I want to ask you, is uh, Mitt Romney lying about your record? Uh, look, uh, these are attack ads. I don't think they work. But I'm, I'm running a positive campaign. I wish you'd have shown one of mine that's I, worth, please, <laughs> worth me. And please, would you put like this on? <laughs> please do. But so, uh, look, I, I'm running for president because I want to lead this country, and I believe I have the experience and knowledge and background. We've run, and basically, we responded once. But look, uh, the message that we're trying to give, and uh, I will continue to give, is why I'm qualified to lead and the people in New Hampshire you, the, the town hall meetings the interface we've had with him with them is what's been wonderful for me it's been the greatest experience of my life now to have a second opportunity to come before the people of New Hampshire and, and I think they'll judge us overall by the kind of campaign we run <laughs> You suggested uh, after he lost in Iowa that, that the negative ads were one of the reasons that Governor Romney lost. I, I, I obviously, since uh, I didn't come in even second, I, and by the way, I'm demanding a recount right, with did. Senator Thompson's uh, Land, vote. I still think that Land. I still think that was a bad count. I think there were some hanging chads there. Look, uh, everybody runs their own campaigns. The people make the judgment. We respond, but uh, look, uh, that's politics in beanbag, and we're moving on. Governor Huckabee, you have said that uh, Mitt Romney is running a, quote, desperate and dishonest campaign. Explain. Well, there were some of the things in the ads that were misleading, but I'm uh, also at the point where I realized that I made a tough decision. It was, frankly, a tough decision because you're very tempted to go out and, and respond to these negative attack ads with, uh, you know, a counterpunch. I made the decision I wasn't going to do that, and I think the people of Iowa rewarded me handsomely with this resounding victory, even though I was incredibly outspent and uh, outmanned there. I think it was a great affirmation of what people are looking for in their next president. They want a president who's for something, not who's just against the other people who are running for president. And I really believe the decision I made was part of the reason that we won and won decisively, and I think it's one of the reasons we're going to continue to win in this country, because people are looking for a positive president who leads not so much horizontally, left, right, liberal, conservative, Democrat, Republican, but vertically, up, not down. And I'm absolutely convinced that if we could change the tone and the tenor of the political discourse in this country and make it where it is more civil, that it would dramatically change the way we govern as well as the way we get to those offices. Governor Romney, why do your ads seem to spend so much time attacking your opponents rather than laying out a positive agenda of your own? 
Well, actually, as you know, and as the people of both New Hampshire and Iowa know, I have spent a lot of money on ads over an entire year, overwhelmingly focused on my positions and what I believe we ought to do for the country. So my message has been very positive and has propelled me from a virtual unknown to being well-known and pretty well-respected in these two states. But hats off to Mike for winning in Iowa. did a terrific job there. I do think that there's a difference between an attack ad where see people go after somebody based on their character and describing someone's record. If people think their record or their positions is an attack ad, that's a, that's a strange thing. In both cases, we verified the facts, we got information from respective journals and so forth to put down the record, and then let people compare the differences. Of course I focused on places where there are differences, but issues are important. And describing differences on issues, like on illegal immigration or on commutations and pardons, I think it's important. Now, I should note that some of the ads that have come back or some of the words that have come back have been very different than just talking about issues. Senator McCain's ad was, was pretty tough. Actually, I thought Mike's chairman was a little tougher. He, he, said, he said he wanted to kick my teeth in. And I only commented that, uh, well, that was don't fun. touch my hair. That's all I said. <laughs> Governor Huckabee, are you persuaded by uh, Governor Romney's <laughs> argument? Just keep, just keep Ed back. Remember, yeah. Yeah. remember almost persuaded? Uh, yeah, that's right. I remember yeah. the hymn quite well. Mm -hmm. Almost Chuck, persuaded. Mm -hmm. Chuck Fred. Norris? That's yeah, Chuck <laughs> Norris is standing outside right now. Uh, if John Wayne was here, I'd have him beat him up. That's right. <laughs> I, I'm not totally persuaded because if you tell a half-truth as if it is the full truth, then, then it can become an untruth. And if you talk about commutations and say, okay, there's commutations, but you don't tell the whole story. I had 8,700 applications on my desk. 8,700 denied, 90% of them. Some of them that I did were things like an 18-year-old with a hot check conviction who at age 35 couldn't get a job without a pardon. Every state has different laws as it relates to that. When it comes to things like spending, no less than the New York Times took that ad apart and said that it was absolutely untrue and said that the spending in my state did not increase as he had indicated, but that if you took those figures, that it was very comparable to what had increased in Massachusetts, and it was more like 3.9%. Uh, during the ten and a half years that I was governor. It's, it's easy to take other people's records and to twist and to turn and to make them sound uh, somewhat ominous, but I, one thing I do know is that the people of my state apparently liked the way I governed because they not only kept re-electing me, and I think that's significant when you're a Republican in a state where 90 percent of the elected officials are Democrat, but when I left office with a surplus and with better schools, better roads, better health care, better natural resources and a better job market. I know this, my approval ratings were still some of the highest of any elected official in my state. Governor Romney, uh, you said today that you felt that you have been hurt by the tag of flip-flopper, that in some people's minds it has stuck. Uh, and when we talked earlier today, you said that in fact you think that your record as a flip-flopper pales in comparison to some of the other people up here at the table. Uh, what, what I'd say is I'm certainly not the only person at this table that's changed their mind on a position. And I certainly would far be in favor of a person who has the willingness to say I was wrong and change their position and become right than someone who's so stubborn as to say they're not going to change their position. So have I changed my position ever on an issue? Absolutely. I've told people time and again that I was wrong when it came to the issue of abortion. And I became pro-life. And that was several years ago. I explained why it was. And I, I'm not going to apologize for that. But I do think that in the political world, I understand that people are characterizing one another, poke fun at you for different things, and that's part of the political process. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna whine about that, but I wanna make sure that people understand what my record is and that it doesn't get twisted and turned just as Governor Huckabee doesn't want his record twisted and turned. We checked very carefully on the facts that we proposed. As he indicates, he gave out 1,033 pardons. I gave out no pardons. He gave out 12 pardons to convicted murderers. I gave out none. That's a difference. Now he says, gosh, you've got to tell the rest of the story. Well, you know, i got a 30-second ad. I can't tell a lot of the story other than to point out that there are some differences. Uh, Mayor Giuliani, you have been hurt, your campaign is, by ethics issues in recent weeks. Uh, your former police commissioner, Bernie Carrick, has been indicted on corruption charges. There have been stories about your visiting your then-girlfriend when you were still married. Uh, do you have too much baggage to lead the Republican Party? 